Counter-Strike is a competitive FPS shooter that replicates the scenario of a terrorist and counter-terrorist attack. <laughs> Literally. The game is commonly known for its high skill ceiling, and as well as just being a really tense game in general. How was that fair? How, you were With over half a million people playing on the game at any given time, it's no wonder just how truly great of a game this is. Being a skillful game after all. Whether if it's you 1v1ing your friend on a small map, We did passing there. <laughs> or joining a lobby with 20 people where the next 30 minutes is nothing but intense and funny chaos, Counter-Strike just seems to never lose its steam as a fun competitive shooter game. But of course, for every good game, there are tens of thousands of more that try to replicate it, and usually being very really bad at that. Some of these games are just downright not fun to play. And while some of these games try to be subtle about being a knockoff, most don't even try to hide the fact that they're ripping off the game. So in this video, I'll be looking at horrible Counter-Strike clones. Let's get started. So the first game we'll be looking at is Special Forces Group 2. Looking at the previews, it's already apparent that this is a ripoff. The description of this game reads, 3D first-person shooter in real time, single player with bots, multiplayer online with Wi-Fi multiplayer, 9 game mode, yeah, you get the idea. Despite the game at first glance looking like literal garbage, it appears that the ratings for this game is actually pretty good, with over 11,000 ratings that rounds up to a 4.3. So let's get into the game and see what we can do. Oh great. So the first thing I notice in this game- oh, oh no, I don't want to sign in. So the first thing I notice in this game is that, wow, the UI in this game is really bad. Compared to CSGO's UI, this one is really unnecessarily complicated and dull. Whether if it's me buying a gun, going to the main menu, or looking at the settings, the UI in Special Forces Group 2 just looks complete garbage. The HUD when you're in the game isn't also much better. With so many buttons on the screen at any given time, it's really hard to try and control and play the game. But most mobile FPS games suffer from this problem, so I guess I'll give this a pass since it's not exactly exclusive to just this game. The first noticeable issue this game has is that it gives you auto-aim and auto-assist on default, which is basically where the gun just looks and shoots the gun for you when you're staring at an enemy. Honestly, I don't know why so many games out there do this. When there's an option to let the game play for you, it often gets really boring as a result, and boring this game was. Sometimes the auto-assist won't even work at times. In this clip where I play on New Big Desert, which is basically just Dust 2, I attempt to shoot my gun, I mean, let the game shoot my gun for me when staring at a guy up on a window. But for whatever reason, the auto assist kept looking at the corner of the wall, which resulted in me trying to constantly look at the guy to shoot him, while auto assist just kept making me look at the god dang wall. Thankfully, there is an option to turn auto aim and auto assist off, but why would you? When there's already an option to let the game shoot and aim for you to begin with, you'll only be handicapping yourself once it's off. It also doesn't really help that on multiplayer, which I'll get back to later, some guy could have auto-aim and assist off trying to win the game, while some nerd from halfway across the globe just deletes the guy for simply looking at him. I decided that for the first few rounds, I would try this game out with bots on classic game mode, which is basically just Counter-Strike with no bomb. There's a number of maps in this game, some consisting of either already existing Counter-Strike maps, old mod maps, or actual original maps that the developers went out to make. Though, even I can say that they're not really that good either. A mechanic that this game has is that you're allowed to choose your own character when you spawn in like the old CS days. Though, again, the models don't really look that great. Like, seriously, what am I looking at here? The bots in this game are alright, I guess. You're allowed to choose the difficulty of the bots, ranging from easy to expert, as well as also adding the number of bots to your game. The interactions with them is, like I said, alright, but it could honestly do a lot better. Like, in most of the interactions I have with the enemy bot, they would just 100% of the time stand there and shoot me blankly. Sometimes they could also use knives and pistols, but that's about it for the variety. Compared to CSGO, the shopping in this game is a little bit different. For one, instead of starting out with $800 on a competitive match, you instead just start out with just $700. The developers would also go on to change some of the prices of the guns, like making the USP a $700 gun, as opposed to just a $200 gun in Counter-Strike. For some reason, they also made the PP Bison, which in CSGO was claimed to be the worst gun ever, the second most expensive submachine gun in the category. This game also introduces completely new weapons not seen from Counter-Strike at all, 
In Special Forces Group 2, there are now weapons like Double Barrel Shotgun, Spaz-12, a P-99, and a Kondo, which is basically just a revolver from CSGO. WHY IS THAT ALLOWED?! And there's also a lot of more sniper rifles in this game. As for the gameplay, it's alright, I suppose. Ignoring the auto-aim and assist, this game is pretty fun to play with against bots and people. But again, Counter-Strike already has that and is 10 times more better. The graphics in this game are naturally pretty poor, but it's a mobile game so I don't really count graphics for gameplay. But it is worth noting that at times, some of the textures in the maps are ripped straight from that of the Source engines. Even the walking sound effects are ripped straight from Counter-Strike and even Condition Zero. Well, it's been fun playing with the bots, but how is the multiplayer like? To my surprise, there were actually people playing on this game, and quite a lot of people at that. Though, looking through it, I think although that there were actually people playing on the match, most were just bots, which you can tell by the names. Overall, I'd say it's a pretty alright clone to Counter-Strike. It's fun, I suppose, and the gameplay is serviceable, assuming you have auto-aim and assist off, and also ignoring the ads that pop up when trying to play the game. Special Forces Group 2 is pretty silly. The next game we're going to be playing is Critical Strike CS Online FPS. If you ever wanted to know what a hybrid between Counter-Strike and Call of Duty would look like, then Critical Strike CS would be the result, as this game takes elements from both titles. Now, some of the issues I talked about in Special Forces Group 2 apply here. Like, there's still auto-aim as well as just having way too much junk on my screen. Except in Critical CS, it's now on steroids. This game plays like a traditional modern FPS game, with playable matchmaking, an addable friend system, and depending on how traditional we're talking, there's also a lot of microtransactions. When hopping into a match, you'll notice it plays a little bit more different than Counter-Strike. As like I said, it seems that not only is it a clone of CS, but also a clone of Call of Duty. There are now elements like grenades, new game modes, and also a lot of missions. It appears that they also have their own music, which I don't know, would you really be going outside with your headphones in listening to Critical Strike CS theme song? Excuse me man, what's up? Hey, what, what are you listening to? The new Critical Strike CS Christmas theme song. Yeah. One strange thing this game has is that instead of you being at 100 health, you're instead now at 1000 health. I guess it's to compensate for the fact that each of the weapons does a high amount of damage, but they could have just made the damage from the weapons much weaker to balance it out. There's also a now a choose your loadout system when you're about to spawn in. The weapons actually seem to have been redone instead of ripping off the CSGO weapon textures. They also went out to change the themes of some of the maps. Like, for example, on Safe House, which takes place in a foresty type area in CSGO, now takes place in a city paradise. There's also original maps like Pool House, which isn't really exactly original as the map has been used throughout thousands of other games. And they've also renamed Dust 2 into Afghanistan. Unfortunately, though, the gameplay is kind of boring due to the fact that auto fire and aim exist. And even if you turn it off, the gameplay is just mindlessly shooting the players with no recoil, making the game extremely unfun to play. It also doesn't help that this game is super pay to win. Every time you load into a game, there's always this annoying pop-up talking about a starter pack that requires money. There's naturally free rewards, but that's just trying to get the player to get hooked on the game. Unfortunately, this game just has microtransactions everywhere. And also, you can't even use 90% of the guns in this game. You either have to rent or pay for them, or unlock the weapons by level tiers. This game also after every round has this gambling mechanic where it randomly chooses a special reward. At first, you can do a free spin, but then it costs a dollar to spin again. There's even a mission where you have to spin the circle yourself. I mean, I know CSGO has a huge gambling problem at the moment, but it's like this game is just trying to get you addicted. And even if you're safe from all the microtransactions, you can also upgrade your already existing gun, which costs money. And you want to know the worst part about this game? There's not even any players. It plays like a traditional FPS to get the player to believe that they're actually playing with other people. But in my playthrough, the behavior of some of these players were just obviously bots. So even if you were a Critical Strike CS Pro that spent all of his money on the perks and bonuses, it would all be for nothing since you're just playing with bots. Maybe there are players in this game, like you would just have to level up in order to play with them, as I was only at level 1 when I played this. But I think I'm just gonna go with the latter in that no one would ever want to play a game as gimmicky and pay to win as Critical Strike CS. Even if this game wasn't super pay to win, it just comes off as a boring, unremarkable shooter. You might as well go play Special Group Forces 2 if you ever want to play a mobile CS game. Since then, the game is not shoving starter packs in what else garbage they would put on your screen. Don't play this game, it's not good. So the next game we'll be looking at is... Wait... Counter-Strike. Yep, I'm not kidding. This game is literally just called Counter-Strike. 
So looking at the game, it already doesn't look too great. The way you play this game is through missions, and quite a lot of missions, like a hundred of them to be exact. The goal of the missions is to eliminate a certain number of soldiers before the time runs out. Which is funny because when you're loading into the game, the screen shows you a stock image of a girl with a kidnapper telling you to save her while you still can. Even though the game is actually just killing brain dead soldiers for under two minutes. Naturally, if the time runs out, you lose. At first glance, this should actually make the game a little bit more engaging since you need to complete the level within a certain amount of time. But with how long and open the map was, it was more frustrating than engaging. Speaking of frustrating, whether if you win or lose the round, you will be subjected to a 30 second unskippable ad, which makes the game that more unenjoyable. It doesn't also help that when you spawn in, there's already a guy next to you shooting you from behind. In fact, more often than not, when you kill the soldiers, they will ragdoll in a glitchy way and soon disappear shortly after. You start out with just an MP5 for your loadout, while the rest of the weapons you have to unlock using the in-game currency. You're also equipped with three medkits, which insta-heals you the moment you click on it. Three grenades, which to be honest were quite anticlimactic. And above all else, general microtransactions. Here's some live audio of me playing the game because I don't know, why not? I gotta say, I'm really confused on how this game is like Counter-Strike at all. Okay, I need to kill some players, so let me quick, let me kill this guy. Uh, where is he? Oh. Uh, oh. Uh. They got him. Oh, there he is. I uh, oh. Uh, oh, alright. So, like, is this game like a ripoff of Call of Duty and Counter Strike, like the last game, or is this just. just shooting simulator? <laughs> to be honest, there's not really that much to talk about in this game, as it's really boring for the most part. Despite the game being out for over a year now, it only ever managed to get two ratings throughout its life, which should give you an idea of how bad the game is. It also doesn't help that the description of the game tends to lie a lot. In fact, let's guess and see which ones are lies and which ones aren't. The best award 3D online multiplayer and AI FPS Counter-Strike 3D shooter game features Play with your friends or online global players Lie Play offline with AI bots yeah, they're definitely bots alright, but even then their behavior and pathfinding is really limited. The real 3D environment allows you to experience the excitement of war. Double lie, unless if you enjoy a healthy dose of masochism, I don't think war is exactly fun. Realistic fighting effect. Lie, simple and intuitive control. Lie, a variety of addictive tasks. Lie, excellent urban environment. That's a lie. Amazing music and sound effects. Big lie, and realistic graphics also a lie. Ironically enough, despite this game literally being called Counter-Strike, it actually has nothing to do with the game as it's for the most part just a generic boring shooter. The most entertaining part about the game was when I discovered a visual glitch when looking through a gate at a certain angle. As for the controls in this game, they are mostly fine, though there is one glaring issue the game has with the movement. For some reason, whenever you click the run button, it only ever moves you forward, which means that it's impossible to run backwards or sideways, making the game feel even more limited. I feel like they could have just made the controls let you move around in any direction, like in, I don't know, every single other mobile game. The game, oddly enough, even has multiplayer, but naturally there were no players to be seen, with only one player appearing to be on the servers, which I assume was just me. I tried to even invite my friend Tara to play this game with me, but instead of the game giving him a link to play the game, it just gave him this. That's very helpful. Maybe there is more to this game past the hundreds of levels, and actually being able to save a random girl at mission 100, but I'm not gonna play that far into the game just to find out. Well, time to give this game its very first review. My review wasn't exactly serious, but I think the message is overall pretty clear. Yeah. In short, don't play this game. So the next game I'll be playing is Counter-Terrorist Multiplayer FPS Shooting Games. That's a mouthful. Looking at the game in the App Store, this game only has 27 ratings that rounds up to a 4 out of 5. The description reads, FPS fans, the moment you have been waiting for has finally arrived. Highly addicted FPS Counter-Terrorist Strike is overall just plain amazing, delivering the nostalgic fast-paced Counter-Strike-like gaming experience on your iPad, iPhone, and iPad Touch devices. 
It's always a good sign to see that the last update on a game was over five years ago. So not even in the game and I'm already confused. So the intention of this game is supposedly to evoke the sense of nostalgia with the old CS days. But as you'll see later on in this game, it's not exactly the best at doing that. So before starting the game, there is three game modes for you to choose from, which is either mission, survival, or deathmatch which the thumbnail of it is just straight up from CSGO, even though this game is supposed to be based off of 1.6. Deathmatch is probably the closest game mode to CSGO's normal gameplay, but that's not really saying a lot. For this game, I ended up having to play with bots since there's not actually a multiplayer system like the description said. A strange mechanic in this game I quickly noticed is that you can't go past 10 or more bots. So for a balance game, I had to play with a 5v5. I also had to choose a map for me to spawn in first, to which there were only three maps. The maps in question are Dust, Snow, and Nuke. I decided that I would play on Dust first since, I don't, I don't know, I just like it. However, upon further inspection, it's not actually Dust. It's just some crappy A map with a Dust theme. Nuke is pretty much an identical copy of the actual map, though the vents near A site can't actually break. And Snow is just a bunch of brick cubes all over the map with snow textures. I might as well talk about the bots first. The bots are interesting. For some reason, unlike the past few games we've been playing where the bots just kind of stand still and shoot you, this game has none of that. The bots just kind of go wherever they want erratically while attempting to shoot you down. I say attempting because no matter how close I was to the enemies, they just couldn't seem to hit me, rarely actually ever hitting me even at point blank range. Though I guess it makes sense as normally, running and gunning in CSGO is not accurate as well. The bots don't even attempt to follow you. For every map, they seem to just run at the very end of the level to the enemy spawn, where once they're there, they'll just go back and run to their spawn again, occasionally meeting the enemies, to which they'll just shoot and run past each other. Heck, sometimes the pathfinding wouldn't even work. On Dust, which again is just a crappy box map, the bot would just run side to side at the boxes. Due to the fact that the bots don't make any attempt to stop running, it's really hard to aim and shoot the bots if you're not in the right position. And because they barely even hit you, it's pretty much impossible to die in this game. The second game mode is survival, which is simply just deathmatch, except it's just one bot you're up against that respawns over and over again, for the intention of seeing how long you can survive for. But you can't even choose the maps in survival, it only ever puts you on the dust map. And the last game mode is missions, which takes place over the course of 45 levels, where you need to complete a certain task in each one, which for some reason also just takes place on Dust and not the other two maps like Nuke or Snow. Most of the levels just consist of tasks like kill three terrorists on level one, for example, which for some reason has no spaces. So with the maps and game modes out of the way, how is the gameplay like? Well, like I said before, it's mostly just trying to shoot and aim at the bots that never stop running. Your only available weapon is a deagle, which for some reason has 12 bullets instead of 7 in Counter-Strike. A weird glitch I discovered with the Deagle is that you can still reload it regardless if it's on a full mag or not. It appears that you can get the other weapons in this game, like an MP5 or Mac 10 which you need to purchase first using the in-game shop. But even then, I still couldn't get to equip the gun even if I had bought it, as no matter how many times I clicked equip, I still just only had the Deagle. And also the Deagle for some reason has 999 bullets, so there's no reason to ever conserve your ammo, which again rips away another layer of depth in this game, as now I can just spam the weapon everywhere with no consequence. There also appears to be a bomb site for the maps, but there's no ability to plant bombs in this game, so why is this here? On the top right hand of the screen, there is a radar that for some reason lets you see where all of the bots are at any given time, which isn't really good since now there's no tension on where the herd of terrorists might be, not that there would actually be any tension in this game to begin with. While there isn't actually an online multiplayer like I said previously, it does appear that this game has a LAN party system. And another option this game has is the leaderboard, which, wow, over 31,000 people have played in? I highly doubt that this is true considering the game only has 27 ratings. Well, congratulations Sawpit14. You are now the official pro of counter-terrorist multiplayer FPS shooting games. All in all, this game is just not very good. Not only are the claims of this game misleading, but the gameplay is also just really annoying since it's hard to shoot the bots that just don't stop moving. Even if the game wasn't deceiving, it's simply just a mediocre poor quality mess. So yeah, not a very good game. The next game I'll be playing is Strike Terrorist CS, and wow, this game is just 80 megabytes. So I found myself rather confused on what this game was about. Like, you basically just fight terrorists around the map with a pistol until the time runs out, I guess. The first thing you'll notice in this game is that all of the maps are just remakes of the many Dust 2 themes. There's CSGO Dust theme, Counter-Strike Source theme, and also the 1.6 theme as well. 
even though the thumbnail of one of the maps is jungly and is most likely Aztec, when in actual reality it's just a Dust 2 map. Another thing you'll notice is that just about everything from this game is ripped straight from Counter-Strike. The weapon models, the textures, the models, everything in this game is just a more low-quality version of Counter-Strike. When the game starts, many janky terrorists start to eventually come to you and try to stop you, so you either have to kill a certain number of the enemies, or survive until the time runs out in order to win. Unfortunately, like most things in mobile games, this game was very janky. Like for one, the terrorists would on occasion just run into a wall, or completely just run away from me. Sometimes when you run into the wall, you start to slowly morph into it. And speaking of morphing, I somehow fell through the grounds and went through the map into the level 200 backrooms. And when I finished one of the rounds, the camera just straight up started hovering forward. Spooky. There is naturally a shop in this game where you can buy guns, but like the last game, I couldn't seem to buy anything. I could buy a medkit, but I couldn't buy the rest of the guns without spending real money. Which means that the person that did the preview shot spent a good 10 bucks on just the weapons and skins in this game. Although, of course, the alternative is just to get the in-game coins to buy the sweet rifles. Which I assume you need to get by winning the various rounds. So you know what? No, I'm not done with this game just yet. I am gonna win Strike Terrorist CS and get the Sniper Tiger if it kills me. So let's see how quickly I can get through this game getting the money. Yes! Finally, I killed all of the bad guys. I hope my awards were ultimately worth it in the end. Wait, I didn't get paid anything. Welp, it turns out this game is just pay to win. Screw this game. So the next game we'll be playing is Critical Strike CS Offline. So instead of this being the Critical Strike CS Online mode like from the last game, this is instead the offline version. But from the looks of it, the two developers that made CS Online and Offline are different people. The description of this game would take a while to finish, but it is worth pointing out that it terms you as a police officer rather than a CT. The only review in this game says, Every time I click on it, it kicks me out instantly. Please fix this because this is not a game. This is a trash can. That's not a good sign. So when I first started the game up, it just instantly put me in a match with a bot without any menu or anything. And the intro of this game is also similar to CSGO's intro. When I killed just two bots, I was immediately greeted with tons of rewards and sound effects. Wow, really nice. Hmm, I wonder if this game is pay to win. Yeah, I knew it. With this game being very pay to win, I couldn't even buy 90% of the guns. Either having to spend a dollar on them or spending thousands of gold which is the in-game currency for this game. Wait a minute, a gold Desert Eagle is the same price as a normal one? That's a first. But thankfully, unlike the last few games we've been playing, I actually have quite a lot to choose from. And by that I mean just four weapons. The four weapons in question are the AK-47, the Scout Sniper Rifle, a USP, and oh my god a bazooka. I don't know where the developer ever got the idea that an RPG should be put in a CS clone, but it's here. And being a bazooka, it just completely one-shots people, making their bodies fly high in the air. Looking at the menu more, I realized that I was actually playing on levels, when really I could just play the multiplayer. But I want you to take a good guess on who the players were when I got into the match. Yep, you guessed it, bots. Most of the maps I had to unlock from completing missions, so the only two maps you'll see in this footage is Blood and Ice World. And I assume for balance sake, you couldn't even use the RPG in multiplayer. So the behavior on the AI's end is actually a little bit more advanced than most of the games we've seen. When they spot you, they move a little bit more slowly, but nonetheless, they still shoot you. Also, why is it that when I kill the terrorists, their blood is either green or blue? Are these people even human? Naturally, if there's a rocket launcher in this game, there's also going to be grenades, to which I could use them to make the ragdolls fly everywhere. I also quickly noticed that the bots could only ever do two damage to me per shot so I couldn't exactly die that fast. When the bots die, they drop their weapons on the ground and hover around for a little while. There was even this one time where I grabbed a machine gun off of someone and went on a rampage. Eventually, I also managed to get my first weapon for playing enough rounds, which was the dualies. 
I mean, other than the fact that this game is pay to win, there's nothing much else to talk about in this game. There's medkits and no ads pop up during gameplay, so that's pretty cool. Eh, I can't see much else in this game. Time to go in the trash. So the last game we'll be playing is Critical Ops Online PvP FBS. And for once, it seems like we're actually playing a halfway decent title. So the game here was actually pretty helpful telling me the basics of the game. When you load into the game, you're put into a tutorial where you learn everything you need to know. It sort of reminded me of Team Fortress 2's tutorial where you walk around and shoot various targets. The game teaches you how to plant and defuse a bomb, use and buy the various weapons in this game, how to use grenades, and above all else, just being really convenient. Since most of the games we talked about just straight up put you in a game with a bajillion buns with no trading mode whatsoever. The way you plan to fuse bombs in this game is simply holding down a bun. After that, you are then put into a practice match with bots to test out your skills. So, as it turns out, this game actually has quite a bit of polish compared to the other games. In fact, I'd go as far as not only saying this game is the most professional and polished looking, but it's also really fun. The shooting felt really nice, and the movement was also really good too. According to the App Store, this game is getting constantly updated, with the last update just being two days ago as of recording this. After you're done playing the practice match, you are now finally able to play with other people. And yes, to my surprise, this game did actually have multiplayer. I don't know exactly how big the player base was, but it was big enough to the point where I got put into a match in just mere seconds after queuing, something that even Counter-Strike fails to do at times. The performance of this game never seemed to get really bad. Even with the fairly high graphics in this game, whether if it was me playing with bots or people, the frames never seemed to drop or lag at all. Though, that didn't seem to stop other people from lagging. So obviously, this being based off of Counter-Strike, the three game modes consist of Deathmatch, Elimination, and Defuse. There's also a fourth one, which is called Rank, but you need to have at least 40 minutes in this game in order to play it, which is pretty neat, I guess. And also, what the heck? There's a Season 6 in this game? In Defuse mode, it's naturally just the normal CSGO bomb defusal mode, where across the maps there are two bomb sites that the terrorists have to plan in, with the CTs attempting to stop them by either shooting all of them or defusing the bomb. The map I loaded in defuse was port. No, not that DE port, this DE port. Upon winning or losing this game, it actually turns out that the CTs and Ts have different names. For instance, the counter-terrorists in this game were called Coalition, while the terrorists were called Breachers. A strange thing to know of the terrorists is that all of the models just consist of these people dressing up as if it was winter with skiing clothes. Like, yeah, I get they're supposed to look scary, but they really don't. While the CTs on the other hand, oh sorry, I mean the Coalition, just seem to be a part of one force, the CRTF. Don't ask me what that means. In this game, you can also buy the normal grenades from Counter-Strike, like the smoke grenade and flashbang. flashbang. To be honest, there's nothing really much to talk about in the multiplayer other than that it's pretty good. In fact, not too recently, two days ago, they seem to have added a pinging system in this game like in Counter-Strike. This is very useful as usually it takes a while to type something on mobile. There was also the other usual mechanics from Counter-Strike, like being able to run faster with your knife and inspecting your weapons. So yeah, the multiplayer was pretty good. Of course, it takes too many notes from Counter-Strike, but ignoring that, it's actually a pretty serviceable shooter. When one of the teams wins 5 rounds, they have to swap team roles. So when I played on this match on par, and my team was naturally rolling through the game, we had to switch to the terrorist side after 5 rounds, to which we won again only with 1 round. Oh, and look at that, I got the MVP. There's also the two other game modes like Elimination, which is kind of like Diffuse except now there's no bomb, and now it's instead, well, eliminate the opposing force. It was also pretty fun in this game. Though I did notice yet again more Oblivious people and a guy trash talking us in the game. And the last game mode is Deathmatch, which again is just pretty much CSGO's Deathmatch, but the mobile version. Now, I've been sounding like I actually really enjoyed this game, which yeah, I suppose I have. But of course, it obviously has its downsides. For one, naturally being a CSGO clone, this game has microtransactions and gambling. Yippee. In fact, when the game was showing me what all the buns did, it forced me to go and unlock my first crate to which I got this okay skin, I guess. But the fact that you force people to enact what unboxing your cases look like is already pretty scummy enough. And this game also had some weird player model glitches. Like, why is this guy just hovering in midair? There was even another guy floating not too far from him. And of course, the main flaw of this game is that it's pointless. Sure, this game is nice, but why not just play CSGO instead? As that game is free and is 10 times more enjoyable than this. My only guess as to why you would play this is that either you're on vacation where you don't have your PC with you, or you just altogether don't have a PC, or at least not that can run CSGO, so you would go on to have to play the alternatives. 
But if you do have a PC that can run CSGO, you might as well just not even consider playing this game. But yeah, other than the fact that CSGO kind of exists, this game is pretty okay. And that's all the games that I'm going to be playing today. Even with all of these horrible clone games, I can see why they are put in place to begin with. Naturally, Counter-Strike doesn't have a mobile variant, so people seeking to play Counter-Strike but don't have a PC will have to resort to these alternatives. But that doesn't really stop the games from not being able to do better, and all around just not... not being good. Before I go, I do want to mention that I now have an unlisted playlist that contains all of the music pieces I use in the video. It's simply a lot easier and more efficient to do this than, say, manually link every single music video I use inside of the description. And also, thank you for 20,000 subscribers as of writing this video. I do very much appreciate the big number. Anywho, that was it. That- that's it. Um... Just- just listen to me and my friend Andrew laugh at Squidward Tentacles for 20 seconds for the credits. Make sure to sublime and like, please. Ha <laughs> <laughs>